Good morning, everybody. So, what's on the planning today? Um, I needed to wake up. Uh, then it's my first morning of deep work. I said my first morning, but because I had a head start, this is not my first morning. I am working, I will work uh, further on the change script and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move on. I have a planning here and uh, this is the video and what I need to do is I have these different parts of the video, the different uh, steps for the hero's journey. I need to work out them further. What is the goal of that section of the video? What is the, the visuals that are going to accompany that piece? And then the core points, the actual mental understanding part that we need to convey with a part of the video uh, and then the feeling of uh, the music and shots uh, with every section of the video so that's the plan actually I'm feeling a little tired today but I push myself to wake up early um, like when I woke up and I saw the time on the screen, uh, right now it's 7.50, so I think I, I woke up at 7.45 with the 5 a.m. thing. I think that was the jet lag, so I just want to slowly move towards uh, earlier and earlier time right now. Yesterday that was like 10, 11 o'clock. Now it's uh, 8 o'clock, so I want to uh, move that time back two hours again tomorrow, but I don't know if it's gonna work, but I hope so. Yeah, so I'm gonna work on the script, the deep work, and um, let's go. That was a great first session of the day. We really moved the project forward of the change video. Um, this video is about how to actually embrace change in your life and like the mental processes that come with that. We switched from uh, like full-time traveling to back here again in the Netherlands and that was not without reason. And that video will explain the thought process and how we came to the point that we actually rather want to go back than to keep traveling because I was working remotely and we could have uh, continued if we wanted. So the fact that we didn't, there's a whole reason behind it and we will go into that. Right now we finished um, the hero's journey what I talked about in the first vlog um, all the steps that it needs to tell a story and I expanded that with the feeling associated to that part of the video it directly influences the music also the core points uh, on what to what needs to be clear for the viewer and then also a goal what is the function of this piece of story what does it need to do from a meta perspective, like what should the viewer be uh, like, for example, in the first part, we really focus on stating our own fears and worries to be more relatable to the audience we're trying to reach. So that's like a goal of a certain thing. A certain part of the story so yeah we really move further what I do will do next is for the different parts of the video I will select a few tracks uh, with the music and put them in a timeline uh, after that 
I will check in with Felicia, see if she agrees with the music. Um, and then we will record the voiceover. And the reason why we record the voiceover after we selected the music is to actually feel the music while we're recording the voiceover. Then it will be a way more coherent picture. Then the next step is to assess which assets like shots or animations or um, b-roll or a-roll we need in order to tell the story most efficiently so how can we use the least assets in order to actually um, convey the story because the creation uh, of assets like shooting shots making animations is very costly and what I learned from uh, a dude that makes huge productions and is really successful in that he looks at the script and turns that into a list of assets shots, animations, blah blah and see where he can compress like a feeling or a point or uh, a core goal of a video into less assets in order to make the edit more simple in order to not waste time on creating more shots than you need uh, this is really a big step for us in actually making the production of a video more efficient because if we want to crank out a lot of these videos we need to optimize this process so that's really great we're moving forward with that I did that the first two hours this morning then I cleaned up my apartment again and now I'm going to the gym again and my goal is to actually show up in the gym and that's like the bar of entry right and I will see at the gym what I will do I ran 15.1 kilometers yesterday so my body is a little sore so I don't know if I will be that crazy again <laughs> let's say so yeah let's go okay so in this vlog I wanted to talk about love liberation for a bit um, how did I get passionate about this how did I want to why do I want to build this business so first some context around love liberation the basic slogan is that or the basic context around love liberation is that we believe that Everything and everyone is made of love and uh, our limiting beliefs and our uh, environment and uh, our parents, our friends instill beliefs in us, trauma and uh, all these different things that prevent the love from expressing itself authentically and fully. And so the goal of love liberation is to liberate that love within through uh, media, through psychedelic sessions that we will facilitate, um, through uh, maybe courses that will teach you to, um, to train your mind in a certain sense or to break through limiting beliefs also with coaching uh, Felicia will do coaching and I will do coaching as well um, and also a blog so this is like the context of the business and like the for me the main part is building the content machine uh, actually turning the ideas into watchable videos and Felicia is more focused on uh, the in-person part so she will focus uh, a lot on <clears throat> these psychedelic sessions that's her first step and also to um, yeah to build that out and to build out the coaching part so really in person that's her focus and the media is my focus uh, also like I think it's important to know uh, like <laughs> Some people around me uh, opposed the, uh, raised the question: Why you? Why? Why should we trust you? Why? Um, 
What do you know about training your mind or uh, psychedelics or uh, liberating love within? Um, basically, the last seven years that I know Felicia, uh, we went through a whole spiritual awakening, uh, which was catalyzed by using psychedelics. So, psychedelics really accelerated our progress and we feel like we have so much to thank uh, the psychedelics for. They really just gave us the insight. Like I was an atheist before I started using psychedelics. And <laughs> when I had my first experience of oneness, of the love that is within, of the cosmic consciousness, of the source. I was just flabbergasted and I knew that there was so much more than meets the eye, right? And suddenly I was like, holy fucking shit, we are all one. <laughs> and uh, like from from that point you get a new foundation in your life and you start to see all the you, you start to get into the content uh, of other people you start to break through your own limiting beliefs and like me and Felicia being in a relationship for so long the only fucking thing we did was just dissecting every little thought and feeling and uh, figuring out what was causing these negative emotions, figuring, in, uh, figuring out what actually limited us and this just went on and on and on and on and on and I can't like fully describe in words how much fucking shit we worked through. Our mission with Love Liberation is to give back knowledge and integration and tools and uh, experience like with the Love Liberation main channel. Oh yeah, also we have a podcast. Uh, but with Love Liberation, the main channel, it's really focused on giving people the experience that we went through in order to really make them experience what we experience and try to... to scratch the surface of a real like th there are a lot of different experiences and we just want to give people that experience at home without having been through the experience themselves even if people uh, don't want to do psychedelics we want to give them uh, ways to actually get a slither of that and not not just with psychedelics also with uh, like our experiences in life, like the traveling we did, following our highest excitement, all the things we are going through in the moment, because I know that people are going through what I'm going through right now, they want to change their lives, they want to um, be productive, they want to do that in a sustainable, healthy, emotionally healthy way, and I know people want this, right? And I am breaking through that right now. So me recording this and actually documenting this journey, I believe will help some people. And it also helps myself. Seeing me running through these thoughts is very um, healthy for myself because it's just like a journal entry, right? I never used a journal um, and I feel like this is my media for uh, getting a look inside my own brain, right? Seeing myself talk is a direct reflection of how I talk to myself, of how I see the world. Um, and this will give me extra insight in how I am. in what I am and who I am. So it's not only for myself, it's also for others. And I'm excited about this. Also yesterday, I, <laughs> it was a vlog of a, 
an hour, so yeah, I couldn't edit it in like an hour because that's like almost impossible. You can't even see all the raw footage in that amount of time. So I finished it in like two hours or something, but I I think this vlog today is gonna be <laughs> a little smaller, but we'll see. Um, further, I'm feeling uh, a little anxious and I don't really know why. Uh, maybe it's just the... Feeling good, feeling a little anxious. I think it's... Um, <laughs> I have the tendency to feel, to begin to start to feel a little anxious if I haven't eaten that much. And that's the case right now. I had a coffee um, and yeah, a coffee on an empty stomach, um, already starting to work. Um, maybe that's making me feel a little anxious or empty, you know? So let's just see what the gym brings me today. I showed up, or at least I am outside of the gym, so I'm going to show up and uh, yeah, see you in the gym. Or when I'm not doing any exercise, I will see you when I get back. Oh, this was a nice and relaxed gym session. I just walked four kilometers, which is fine. Didn't went to the sauna because it didn't excite me. I posted two shorts on uh, TikTok and um, Instagram. So that was really nice to just walk on the treadmill and just post uh, two shorts. And it already on TikTok did already very great. It was 590 views in. For the longest time, I didn't feel safe in the world. I built up so much distrust. I didn't trust my own masculinity and I didn't trust the masculinity of the world, of the people around me. So I felt like I wasn't able to soften into anything. It started with me actually going into myself, going into my past traumas and into the past pain and heartache and times where I didn't feel felt seen, the times where I didn't felt hurt, the times where I felt like I needed to protect myself and just really feel it all. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the life I dream about and this, this whole pursuit of me uh, trying to build this business uh, is all in the name of trying to do something good for the world while also creating a life uh, for me that is void of financial problems and uh, security, certainty, but I feel like for that to happen, I first you first need to go through a period of uncertainty. Like for example, I have had times where I was delivering groceries, uh, until my video business took off. I had times where I, uh, when my video business was failing a bit, that I worked in a video production house. Um, and this uncertainty, this period of uncertainty, all started with me not choosing uh, my formal education to go further into that. I stopped when I had a Bachelor of Artificial Intelligence. I studied that and the first thing you think, right, is oh my god, that's so booming right now and there's so, such good money into that. And I really was excited about it in the beginning. Like it sounded really cool, I was young, I didn't have any concept of what that would actually mean in the work field and I still wasn't sure if I was even good at it. I just like the first time I applied for a job and I almost got one um, 
there was an offer and just because I knew that I really liked video I also put out offers uh, to help people with video services and eventually I came to the choice do I want to follow my passion work for two entrepreneurs helping them with video content as a new uh, or go into programming and um, and and like work behind work on code every day right and during my period at artificial intelligence the last period of my studies I really committed to trying uh, to get the best grades possible to actually give it a shot and even though my grades were like super high, I even got the best um, grade uh, in, a few, uh, in, in one test, right? So I really was thriving, but I didn't really like it. And it really cost me like so much mental energy to write code. It didn't come naturally to me and like video was just like playing to me so I made the decision to do artificial uh, to do video production and that ushered in a time of uncertainty for me uh, there was no like after a month uh, uh, of, the, of a trial period in that job uh, with the entrepreneurs uh, it, we decided to bro break it off they decided to break it off because um, I couldn't fulfill my um, obligations or my hype around what I would be able to do basically uh, because I was just not schooled yet or experienced yet in really high volume production I'm actually feeling that I am just starting to figure it out like truly figure it out like set up a pipeline have clean workflow steps you know uh, really optimize stuff for um, Mag ik vragen? Ja. Kan ik wat gedaan voor mijn identiteit? Full on. Uh, u kunt hier niet op de weg staan. Uh, ik weet full on. Zien jij deze? Dat gedaan politie door één idioot. Zien jij? Mm -hmm. En deze klopt dat niet. Zien jij? Ja. Yeah. Alsjeblieft, dank je. Alright, uh, that was weird. <laughs> was a woman on the street uh, she needed me to look at her ID I don't know why um, <laughs> that was weird okay um, but yeah so it ushered in a, per uh, a period of uncertainty uh, and then I just went like most people would consider going from a formal education on a university uh, to delivering groceries as a step back but I knew and I was excited about being able to provide for myself with my freelance services and not even five months later I could sustain myself with that video business and right now I'm in a place where uh, some of my obsession <laughs> with YouTube is actually cashing out right now and um, right now I can work one day a week and live from that and spend all the other time in building and investing time in that new business so yeah that's like but that took a period of uncertainty and me 
stepping back in the hierarchy of uh, society, right? And some would even say that I'm still doing like shit um, because I don't have a steady job, uh, whatever the fuck that means. Um, even a job isn't steady because they could fire you at any moment if they downsize or whatever, it's all out of your control. And when you have your own business, the quality of your service will determine whether you have work or not. And I feel like that's way more controllable and safe. You can decide to pivot what you focus your energy on in order to fulfill uh, a need in the market and I believe that I learned so much in this entrepreneur journey or like freelance journey so much free time to actually explore this uh, YouTube game right and right now I have a client that actually has a YouTube channel with a lot of subscribers and I implement all that knowledge that I gained through through exploring in my free time that was all I was doing I was looking up how to make videos what the YouTube algorithm is about things to optimize on YouTube like all I was just obsessed with YouTube and video and right now <laughs> I'm consulting and making thumbnails for a party that that went from 10,000 subscribers to 30,000 subscribers since I joined there you could say yeah but that's also has to do a lot about a lot to do with their content and their quality of content and that's true but the packaging of the click getting the click was just not up to par yet with the rest of YouTube and once I gave my my spin to their a strategy of getting the click of um, coming up with ideas that would spark curiosity with their target audience some videos just exploded even to half a million views like videos that were like almost dead for years or a year or something suddenly blew up and that's the magic of having a attractive offer like what you're offering on YouTube is valuable information or entertainment or whatever and getting that click is getting people en enthusiastic or curious or excited about your video that's behind that thumbnail and if you don't spend time crafting that thumbnail you won't see that much performance you could argue that hey Max your thumbnails on these vlogs are like shitty as fuck and I agree uh, but that's not my goal with this vlog. My goal with this vlog is to see myself grow and document this journey. Maybe uh, in, the, uh, in the future grab some clips, right? And put them on uh, social media, like short clips. But yeah, I was ranting again. So I'm home. This was a little bit of context on how I see uh, the entrepreneurial journey. And yeah, I'm at a pretty good place right now yeah let's just grab this opportunity and invest as much as I can in getting better at business getting better at content getting better at providing services I did a little bit of consulting and I really fucking love that like coming up with ideas and uh, just just speaking and nerding out about YouTube that's such a privilege to get paid for that right um, so yeah, it's um, it's a hell of a journey and I'm exactly at the right place and it's perfect. So yeah, I guess um, this is it for the car vlog today. Um, I will edit my vlog later today. Maybe I'll jump in, maybe not. Uh, but if not, I'll see you tomorrow. Um, and if I do, I'll just cut this away. <laughs>